Hello everyone, welcome to Bit of Anatomy. To see more videos like this, do subscribe to our channel. So in this video, we will see the features and attachments of the clavicle. So usually this is the first bone that we read in the upper limb. So this bone, it is also called as collar bone because the shirt's collar, it rests on this. It is situated at the root of the neck and it transfers the weight of the entire upper limb into the axial skeleton. So this is some kind of special bone, so it has got its own peculiarities and or specialities. So it is modified long bone. As you can see, it is the length is more when compared to the width, but it is quite modified when compared to the other typical long bones. This is the only long bone which is situated in horizontal direction. So this is the first bone to start ossification. So this is the last bone to complete ossification. It does not have any medullary cavity and it is the only long bone so which contains two primary centers of ossification. And it is the only long bone which ossifies in membrane. So in spite of this, why this is called as long bone means it helps in transmission of the body weight. So any part or any bone which transmits the body weight, so it is included under long bones. Coming to the features of the clavicle, so first we should determine what is the side of the clavicle. So to see that we should know the few basic parts. So it has got a medial end, so it has got a lateral end, so it has got an anterior border, so which is concave in the medial, sorry, the convex in the medial two third and concave in the lateral one third. And in the inferior part, if you see over the lateral side, there is an irregularity, so which is called as conoid ridge and the trapezoid tubercle. So this should be on the inferior aspect. So when we are holding it in anatomical position, the medial end should be towards the medial side. The lateral, of course, should to be towards the lateral side and the anterior border of the medial two-third, it should be convex anteriorly. Suppose if I hold it like this, even now if you see medial lateral anterior convex in the medial two-third and concave in the lateral two-third. But what has happened here? As you can see, the conoid ridge and the trapezoid tubercle, it is towards the upper aspect. So it should be actually towards the inferior aspect. So now if you see, this is actually the left-sided bone, so with the medial, lateral end, convex in the medial two-third, concave in the lateral one-third. So usually when we study the clavicle, we study it in medial two-thirds and lateral one-third itself because there is a curvature at this junction. So if you see the medial two-third, so it has got a medial end, so which is quadrilateral or quadrangular in shape. So this forms joint with the sternum. So a joint called as sternoclavicular joint for that reason this part or this end it is also called as sternal end. So the medial two-third it is somewhat rounded with an anterior surface, superior surface, inferior and a posterior surface. So this anterior part so this provides origin to the pectoralis major muscle. Then there is also origin of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And in the inferior part, there is a groove which is not very prominent in this, so called as groove for subclavius muscle, which receives the insertion of the subclavius muscle part. So these are the major features that we appreciate in the medial two-third. And in the lateral one-third, as you can appreciate, the lateral one-third is quite flat when compared to the medial part. So this end, so it presents an oval articulating facet which articulates with the acromial process of scapula. So that joint, it is called as acromioclavicular joint. So if you see the parts here, it has got a superior surface and inferior surface, which is rough, which contains conoid and trapezoid ridges or tubercles, anterior sharp border and a posterior sharp border. So this anterior sharp border, it provides origin to the deltoid muscle and the posterior sharp border, it receives the insertion of trapezius muscle. And these conoid and trapezoid tubercles, they provide attachment to conoid and trapezoid parts of the coracoclavicular ligament. So to summarize, to determine the side, the medial end is rounded and towards the medial side, lateral end is flat and towards the lateral side. 
medial two third anterior part is convex forwards lateral one third anterior part is concave forwards so this is belongs to the left side so while describing hold it in the left hand so someone has written here r and l so that doesn't matter it is the left side not the right side and if you see the major attachments pectoralis major deltoid origin sternocleidomastoid origin insertion of trapezius insertion of subclavius a ligament on this region called as coracoclavicular ligament so this junction between the medial two third and the lateral one third it is the weakest point of the clavicle and which is prone to fracture when we fall on outstretched hand so there are two joints formed by the clavicle so sternal end forms a joint with the sternum called as sternoclavicular joint the acromial or the lateral end forms a joint with the acromion process of the scapula the joint known as acromio clavicular joint so ligaments so one is the coracoclavicular ligament and over the medial side there are some ligaments like costoclavicular ligament and interclavicular ligament so these are the basic features that you should know in the clavicle do subscribe to see more such videos on human anatomy thank you